Welcome to Psych Terms, where we discuss some psychological terms that might be confusing and offer a couple of visuals and examples that will help you understand them better. Today we're talking about three particular terms that are related to each other, the id, ego, and superego. We're going to be giving a couple examples and a couple of visualizations that might help you remember them if you ever come across them again. This is Sally, and Sally's having some issues, some anxiety. Now, according to Sigmund Freud, the root of anxiety usually comes about when someone has an internal struggle, when parts of themselves want to satisfy their own urges, and so a struggle starts. However, many of Freud's theories weren't really based in experimentation and data, but we'll come back to that at a later date. Now, according to Freud, these internal conflicts are due to struggles between different parts of Sally's personality. Uh, the id, the ego, and the superego. And he illustrated it very well by giving a metaphor of an iceberg. Now, when you look at an iceberg, a lot of its mass is below the surface where you can't really see it. So if we look at the top, we can see the ego. Now, this is based on the conscious level in which we can access the information in our mind. Right next to it is something called the superego. Now this is more on a pre-conscious level. It's outside of our awareness, but is still accessible. And finally, deep below the surface lies the id. Now this lies in the unconscious mind, an area in which we can't readily access. However, it is flooded with emotions and motivations that do impact our actions, even though we might not be able to access that. Now, starting with the id, it's a reservoir of unconscious psychic energy that, according to Freud, strives to satisfy basic sexual and aggressive drives. So the id operates on the pleasure principle, essentially, demanding immediate gratification in most things. We can most successfully see the id as a newborn baby, one that is just uh, crying out for attention, food, nourishment, and it seeks its own individual selfish desires above all else. It's not really concerned with the feelings or um, the motivations of others. It's only concerned about its selfish needs. Of course, as we grow up, the id's desires grow with us. And so we can see a lot of the other needs, such as we talked about earlier, sexual and aggressive desires grow alongside our own desires. So the id is constantly concerned with those selfish desires. Now the id cannot grow constantly without being checked, and so another part of ourselves comes to the frame as we grow. It's called the ego. Now the ego is the conscious section of our mind. It's the executive part of our personality that really mediates the id and makes sure that it is in check. Now, the ego is something of a referee, making sure that the id is in check according to real-world rules. Around age four or five, Freud theorized that children start to develop what is called like moral compass. At this point, they start to internalize a lot of rules and regulations and come up with an ideal way that the world runs. So they start to follow these rules and a conscious develops within them, a moral compass of sort. At this point, the superego starts to emerge. Now, this is a part of the personality that, according to Freud, represents internalized ideals and provides standards for judgment, uh, the conscious, and for future aspirations. Essentially, this is the angel on your shoulder, and it is constantly looking out to do the right thing, whispering into your ear what should be done. That anxiety that Sally was feeling is brought about when these different parts of her personality start to engage in conflict, and the struggle between them creates an unsureness, an anxiety within her. Now this most commonly happens when the id and the superego engage in conflict with each other over a moral decision. However, this is also why the ego is around, so that it can play referee between the two. So just to recap, the id is the selfish desires within oneself, usually really buried down below in the unconscious mind. Not easily accessible, but still influencing you throughout your day. The superego is the polar opposite of that, a moral compass that is 
concentrated on the ideals of the world and looking towards success and aspirations. Now the ego, or the conscious mind, is coming to terms with the battle between the id and the superego and plays as referee between them, usually looking towards logical and realistic outcomes for whatever desires the two have. 